Hi guys, thanks for pressing play on this video. What you're about to watch is a part of a masterclass that I was able to present at the Griffin Institute of the Performing Arts. The message is specific to the students of the Institute, but I realize that you may also receive a benefit from the message. So I decided to share it with you here. Some of the topics that we talk about include how to improve your stage presence, how to learn tunes, and why do we play music at all when most of us have no desire to be professional musicians. So without further delay, here's part of the master class. I hope you enjoy it. It's a difference. I forgot my point. <laughs> oh, real, real time feedback. When, it, when the sound comes out the bell, you, you know if you feel good or if it makes you smile or if it makes you cringe. Ask yourself the questions, why am I cringing? Why, why does that sound bad? And, and answer the question and then adjust. I'll... Okay, so when you're playing for an audience, um, how do you balance playing for them and then playing for yourself? Like, is there a balance that you have to achieve? How do I balance playing for an audience versus playing for myself? Another life lesson. What did we just talk about? Uh, life is better together. Is it, is it better to keep things to yourself or to share it with other people? So give the gift of music. I do take thought when I'm making a set list. Yeah, I think the audience will like this song. Uh, I don't like playing this particular song. Hmm. Maybe, how can I uh, project the same feeling with a different song? One that they would like just the same. Think about these things, I think about that. Now you do need to present yourself in the best way possible. Maybe, you're, maybe you still have to work certain things out. So maybe you'll simplify it, maybe you'll play a different song altogether, but there is some thought there. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were first starting out, how long did it take you to prepare before you were coming up on stage and doing all this stuff? I don't know if there's a definitive answer to that. The way I look at it is preparation started when I began playing the instrument. For me, I don't know how many others I doubt um, share this philosophy, but I practice, my, my practice is primarily like fundamentals slurs, tonguing, uh, long tones, boring stuff. Nobody likes doing that. However, uh, when I get phone calls to do cool things, it's, it's less time I have to prepare. Like there's this one particular song I played recently, like the tonguing was really difficult. But I practice tonguing difficult things. Does that make sense? So um, I'll try to give you a little bit more solid answer. So like if, I, if there's something on my calendar, uh, for example, I, I have a Chicago Jazz for Harmonic concert coming up next month at Millennium Park. And I know Orbert Davis writes high register things for the trumpet. So I, um, I tailor my practice toward that. Long tones, more long tones in the upper register, more slurs going up there so that I can build my endurance for that. Does it make sense? So the preparation never, ne it never stops. But I can, I can tailor it towards certain uh, concerts. Hey guys, thanks for sticking through till the end. Press the like button if at least one of these tips were for you. And watch another lesson here in the channel. See you next time.